Alrighty, let's continue with this game. The orphans escaped the direst threats. Somehow! But how did they get out of this unfortunate event? Well, you'll notice the house is now uh, taller, right? Now it's a 5x4 house. Wow, this is an awful house. But this new floor gives us uh, information of how the kids escape dreadful situations. Do they use a telephone? Do they bite stuff? Do they invent stuff? Or do they read stuff? And that's that's very specific per child. Klaus likes reading, and he generally learns a lot of things while reading. Um, now, Violet, on the other hand, the resourceful girl she is, she likes inventing. She likes inventing things. And so, uh, oftentimes, she'll tie up her hair. That's generally what she does when she's about to invent something. It helps her think. Um, yep. And Sunny, obviously the baby, cannot do much. Uh, she, she has a tooth. Just one tooth. It, it, I think... I think she actually has two teeth. Anyway, it's very sharp, and that's why she sometimes helps her family members out by biting things. Oh! Ah! Drat it! Okay, so what happened? The man with wards grabbed Violet and threw her into a burning building, but the children got out of the situation by reading a book. This is honestly like we're writing our own series of unfortunate events book through it they just randomly generate plot events. <laughs> like we randomly generate, okay, who's gonna be the villain of this book? How, oh, how are they gonna try to kill the kids? How are the kids gonna escape? Uh, yeah. It's very cute. Okay, so, um, I should get back to actually doing commentary on the actual game and how to solve the puzzles, or I could just solve the puzzles like this. Um, I do a little, I do solve these puzzles faster if I'm not talking, uh, obviously, because that way I don't have to think so much about what I'm saying <laughs> at the same time as I'm, uh, solving these puzzles. Too much thought! Too much thought for me. It's called multitasking. A word which here means actually being able to focus. Drat it! So Count Olaf threw Violet in a cage, then subjected her to a bag of peppermints. Now Count Olaf... Oh, oh, and the kids called for help. Oh, that's good. Now Count Olaf uh, rarely does the same evil scheme twice. Well, uh... Sometimes, it depends on what the evil scheme is. If the evil scheme is, say, you know, disguising himself, well, yeah, he does that all the time. But I think, uh, you know, he doesn't try to, say, you know, have these kids get eaten by a snake more than once. He only did that the once, and it didn't work, and then he just gave up and moved on. He didn't try to feed them to the leeches multiple times. He just, he just tried that once, it didn't work, and then he gave up and moved on. So that's, that's sort of how um, he uh, generally does things. Okay, so let's see. Hand is above the teeth. Eyes are to the left of that. Mr. Poe is to the left. Okay, well, okay. Violet's underneath there. Oh, oh, I've got this. All right. <laughs> so Count Olaf. Uses a forged note to grab Sunny so he can throw her into a fire and they escape with an invention. Drat it! Not a bad book. I would not mind reading that book. Okay, uh, let's see what happens. Count Olaf is to the left of the man with wards, who, um, apparently does not go there. Guys, three to the right of the hand. Klaus, Sunny, and Violet go like that. Hook-handed man is above peppermints. So where are the peppermints? Here. Peppermints are to the left of the fire, which is to the left of the leeches. Klaus is above the fire and above the teeth. The teeth are to the left of the phone. And the phone is to the left of the book. And it looks like the forged note is to the left of the cage. Man with oh. a heart. 
Fruits grabs Violet, feeds her peppermints, <coughs> and she escapes by calling for help. Drat it! I don't recall them ever calling for help in the books. Putinesca sauce is an Italian term for rude children. No, 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 it's, it's spicy sauce for pasta. Pasta Putinesca in, in the first, first book, I believe. No matter how charming, intelligent, and lovable the Baudelaire orphans are, disaster and misery are always around the corner. Now we have a 5x5 five five screen, and we've got some extra items. We've got an extra evil villain, the very large person. We've got an extra thing of rope. Okay, so people can tie up our heroes. Oh no. And they can subject them to a trip to Peru. Oh no. I believe that was uh, the second second story. Count Olaf wanted to take them to Peru in order to just flee the country with them and steal their money that way. The foul villain. Okay, so the pale woman goes above the hand. And then Klaus is to the left of Mr. Poe. Because we have this empty room in the middle, there's only that's the only spot where you can be two left of somebody in that row. Oh, what's this clue? So the red rag room. Huh, that's that's the name of the room. Oh, uh, I guess we could call it the red rag room if we want to. It's not a very scary or intimidating name, I, I don't think. But uh, sure, let's go with that. <laughs> oh! Drat it! So, a very large person overcame Klaus by manhandling him, then subjected him to the event of a snake bite, but he got out of it by reading a book. Good for him. Good for him. Okay, so let's see. Oh, we've got another way to uh, reveal a villain. The Tattoo Finder. We can use Count Olaf's tattoo, his foul tattoo, to reveal him. So this is the green gimlet toad, no, the bilbus bath. What? What a strange name for a room. Anyway, that's, that's the bathroom. Mm, Alright, leech there. Cross the Mr. Poe here. Wartman... Uh, Wartman's gonna be here. And Violet... Above the fire, above the invention. Drat it! Yes, and there we go, we got to see. They, they revealed Count Olaf's tattoo, which reveals his identity, and so they were able to escape. That's good. That's good, that's good. Okay, so I'm looking here, the very large is very large person, not very large woman. Therefore, I imagine this is supposed to be uh, Count Olaf's, uh, you know, henchman who is, uh, might be a man, might be a woman. It's not exactly easy to tell. I, I, I don't think anybody is quite sure of that, that person's gender, and nobody's rude enough to, like, go and ask her. The Bowler orphans are very nice. They're not just going to ask her or him uh, what his gender or preferred pronoun is. Not, not without, like, you know, any reason to bring it up in conversation. And their conversations are generally pretty short. It generally goes along the lines of, DON'T KILL ME! That's generally what, that's generally the information that the uh, Baudelaire's wish to convey, convey to all of Count Olaf's henchmen. And I have to say, I, I do not blame them. I do not blame them. I would like to convey that information. Oh, and it looks like Uncle Monty is here. Oh, hey, Uncle Monty. Nice to see that you made it to the party. Okay, so leeches to the right of the Peruvian ticket, and then Klaus to the right of Sunny. Ha ha ha. Drat it. I find it funny that Uncle Monty is uh, is a victim here, being forced to eat peppermints. Um, yeah, you know what happens to Uncle Monty in the book? He is murdered. 
He is stabbed to death by Count Olaf, most likely. I, I, I don't think we get told exactly who kills him. I don't know. In any case, he is murdered. So, um, I think he would much prefer being forced to eat peppermints than being murdered. Now, granted, the peppermints are quite awful, but, but being murdered is a little bit worse. And he was one of the good guardians, too. Like, the other people who guarded the Baudelaire orphans, they, get, they basically are given a new guardian pretty much every book. The other guardians are not so good. Not so good. So, I mean, Uncle Monty was nice. Aunt Josephine is kind of useless. Uh, yeah, she's kind of useless. Count Olaf, of course, is an evil villain. Um, I understand when they go to the village and the village tries to take care of them, the village forms an evil, angry mob and attempts to stab them to death. Not good guardians. Uh, what other guardians? Let's see, they go to the circus in the one, um, yeah, anyway, most of their guardians are awful people. I seem to remember in the Ursat's elevator, Josephine, or was her name Esme? Esme, I think, Esme, yeah, Esme. That's me, Squalor. She was not a good guardian. Her husband was a nice guy. He was. He actually helped take care of the the, um, the Baudelaire <laughs> orphans. But most of their guardians are evil villains. And so I feel kind of bad for Uncle Monty, who was who was attacked by evil villains, because he was a, he was a good it. guy. The good people are so so rare this series. It, it just makes you wish that they could stay forever, rather than always being subjected to evil plans. What room does Klaus like the most? A library. A library. 50 points for me, and I am a junior detective.